How's it going everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming and this is an RPG Maker MZ tutorial on how to make destructible wall tiles. You can also make destructible floors that turn into holes using something similar. Uh, it's a very easy method on how to do this. There's some optional things I put in here like a variable to check the durability of your um, tools, your pickaxes that you use to dig through stuff. Uh, you can optionally put that in as well. You can make it so that when you dig through tiles, you can reveal treasure chests like that. You can have multiple different types of tiles to dig through. Um, it's really kind of flexible on how to do this. It's pretty easy. The limitations are downloading some free plugins and, um, you know, your own, your own mapping skills, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, here you can see when we run out of pickaxe, pickaxe durability, we're unable to dig through, so we're running a simple condition to run a check on that. But if this is interesting to you, let me show you how to do it. The heads-up display where we've got the pickaxe durability is uh, using SRD's HUDmaker uh, Ultra. Very easy plugin if optionally you want that. You're going to add a custom, uh, a couple of custom components. The first is going to be text, so that'll be right there. When you add the text, it'll just, you know, have it say what you want, pickaxe durability, and you, you place that and drag it and put it wherever you want. Boom, like that. And the second thing you're going to add is a custom gauge, which is that one. And once you select that custom gauge, you can, um, give it any types of animation uh, or opacity changes you want. You might have seen that uh, mine was kind of cycling through all the colors and it was kind of fading in and out of opacity. So in order to do that, property opacity, loop behavior back and forth. Duration is uh, in number of frames. So this is going to be three over three seconds. It's going to ease in and ease out using a sine curve, starting at 75% opacity and ending at 100%. So it's going to be see-through at certain points so that you can see what's under it at, and uh, back and forth. Animation type on create, continue from current, same as forward. And then for the hue slider, the property is hue, duration is going to be over um, 240 frames, back and forth, sign ease and out, starting 1% or 1 degree, ending hue 360 degrees. When you go from 1 to 360 and you go in and out, back and forth, it's just going to cycle through the colors, back and forth, back and forth. So that's the same thing going on right there. <clears throat> and that's basically it. You pick your colors. You're going to be setting um, one variable if you want to do this. Like I said, pickaxe durability. Uh, and so I'm using variable number six and I'm calling it pickaxe durability. So you'll set that up in the game. And then when you save your game, you can hit re reload right here. And that'll set that up. The maximum gauge, you can have uh, another variable if you want to set this to be a different variable. I've decided to just say it's a number of percentages. So you can save yourself a variable and just set this 100 to 100 if you want to use percentages and like say every time you pick through a wall it takes one percent or two percent or whatever you want so you can have another variable say variable seven pickaxe maximum durability or you can just set this to an arbitrary number like i did here at 100 then you pick the color from the from the left side the color on the right side and you can change your um, outline colors and do more with the hud maker if you want once again this is optional you don't really need that sort of thing but uh, if you do want it uh, it is there. So how do you make it work in the game? Well, we're going to need to find a good uh, tile set that has some tiles on the B section. So you can find, I'm using first seed material caves here, and I'm basically looking for a piece of uh, the tile set that has tiles that, that could uh, match uh, up well, and I could do most of the, the dungeon with. So um, I've found that this tile right here looks okay if you just stack it on top of each other. Going to the event layer, you see like it, it looks, you know, not as good as it could, but it could still be destructible walls. You can make as many of these events as you want, but what we're going to do is find a good B tile set and find a section of events that we're going to create using those. So um, once we've found it, that's uh, we're going to move on to the event layer and we're going to create new events. So in this, we're going to have a simple condition check. If you decide that you want your pickaxe to have a durability, then we're going to do a conditional. We're basically going to decide how much durability you need to have in order to continue. In this case, I'm saying if your pickaxe durability is greater than or equal to two, then you can proceed 
and also have a create else branch here. So what happens when you proceed? Well, then um, we're going to say show animation. This is all flare. So that's why you saw me playing an animation when I'm smashing through the walls. You can decide whatever animation you want. You control a variable, the one that you're running a check on, and reduce it by any arbitrary number you want. I'm setting it to reduce, reduce it by 2. So I'm saying pick that variable 6, subtract 2 from it and then turn on self switch. On the else handler, we're gonna play a sword because if we're unable to meet the requirement of having enough pickaxe durability, it's just gonna like cling, cling off of it. And you don't really need to have this if you don't want. You can leave this completely blank and not have any requirements at all. And instead, you're just going to have a control self switch A on action button. So it'll just be control self switch A on action button if you don't want to have any durability at all. On the second page, it's going to be blank below character. Make sure this switches to below character, otherwise you'll have an, uh, an obstruction. And the condition for page two is self switch A on, which is what you turn on right here. So the mo most easy, easy way to do this is to show animation, control self switch. That way you still get something. And on this side is self switch A requirement. If you want there to be a chest underneath you can do that as well. So on the second page, it will be different. So the first page, essentially the same thing. When you turn self switch A on right here, instead of this being a blank, it's, this will turn into your treasure chest. So then you do your movement route right here, your sound effects. We're gonna turn on self switch B, give the player the item, let them know what item they got. On this one, page three, you'll have self switch B condition for that this page. So um, that's how it looks for when you want a treasure chest in here. Basically, all you're going to be doing is going to the image so when you create a new event you're going to select the image and you're going to scroll to the bottom and you're going to say tile set b and you find the tile set you want to be destructible so in this case i've been using all of from uh, here to here so i can select this one and say okay and i'll write in all the conditions right there and simple animation show animation is right here on, on tab two. You want the animation to be on this event and you give it whatever animation you want it to have. I recommend picking the same one so that you have some consistency. I think I was using something like that. You don't want wait for completion on because it's gonna slow it down. And then you do the self switch A, which is over here. Control self switch, turn A on. And then you say new page, condition self switch A, make sure this is below and that's basically it. Now when you walk across this, it's going to destroy this and let you walk across it. Pretty much that's all you gotta do. And that's the end of the tutorial. So hopefully you found it helpful, informative. If you did like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have a Discord. Join us in the Discord. We have a Patreon. Back us on Patreon if you'd like to support what we do. Love you guys very much. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.